But as I was saying, you'll be surprised how people praise illegit illegitimate words. It's like people are not trying to please God anymore. They're trying to please people. It's like they look around and see a bunch of women in the audience and be like, you can teach, woman. Paul was just talking about that back then. Have you read the Old Testament? That's all I'm going to say. Have you even read it? And have you even read the New Testament? But it's like people praise lawlessness. But guess what kind of people praise lawlessness? People who are lawless. They endorse it. You see, I was watching a something in, um, years ago, and I love this saying. And <laughs> it's biblical if you look at it from that way. Well, I was born this way. And the, uh, the guy said, that's a solution to that. Be born again. <laughs> For all those that say they were born this way. Well, according to scripture, we must be born again. We must be. We got to go to Christ and be born again. See, by telling people, you okay this way. And that's how God made you. It's a great deception. Now, I'm going to lead you to scripture right quick, if I can remember correctly. The apostles asked Jesus Christ a question. They said a, a child was born with an infirmity. He said, who sinned? Why did this done? Was it the mother that sinned or the father that sinned? He said, neither. He said, this, was, this is happening for the word of God. I, I bet you a lot of people don't even get what he's saying right there. Heal. He even taught you more than one lesson. It ain't the parents' fault. It ain't the son's fault. Or the, the husband's fault. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? You see, we live in a world where everybody blames things on generational curses. Everything. Oh, my parents passed this down to me. Or this and that. Well, the word says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's no such thing as the blame game. It is written. God said this. I will visit the iniquity. He said he will. He said, I will visit the iniquity to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And so mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commands. A generational curse is not passed down by the parent. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that. A generational curse is not passed down by the parent. Evil ways are not passed down by the parent. That's what everybody trying to tell you. I don't even know why I'm talking about this right now. I wasn't planning on it. But it's not. It's passed down by God. His judgment. He said, you can inherit a blessing or a curse. It's up to you. You inherit it from who? God. You inherit it from your parents. The parent has no power. But when you give yourself over to sin, God allows the sin to continue. He allows it. He actually endorses it. So the only person that can deliver you from sin or a curse is God. That's you. You can't break every chain. God has to break it. God has to break down and tear down. He has to do it. He has the authority to do so. He has the authority to let curses keep going. Look at the world we live in now. You see, we live in a blame game world. It's like this, it's like that. Y'all better reverence God and everything. He said, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Right? I'm just telling you what I know from the word of God. 
But people preach all kind of things. You can break generational curses. You can't break a damn thing. Who can make straight what God has made crooked? I'm trying to tell y'all something this morning. You can speak life into your life. Oh, ha, ha. That's the biggest joke I heard all year. I can speak the words. But it's God that gives the increase. You see, we live in a generation where they're trying to play, you are gods. They distort the word and make it look like you have authority. All authority belongs to God. I keep telling people who over, who run things, people don't like it. Satan has to go through God. Evil angels got to go through God. Demons got to go through God. Everybody got to go through God. Everything worked for God. Until you realize that, you're going to stay lost. That's why we lean on His word. Not my words. We lean on His words. That's why He say, lean not on your own understanding. Lean on my understanding. All your ways acknowledge the Lord, and He will direct your paths. Uh, you, you're understanding me. You don't direct your own. You don't have control of your own destiny. Like many people teach, like Steve Harvey teach. You got to work hard. I, I ain't got to do nothing. All I got to do is trust in the Lord. He's the one that teaches my arms to bend the bow. <laughs> uh, Y'all ain't hearing me. He's the one. Not by might, not by power. Do you understand? I love when I read Samson, the story of Samson. I watch that movie. And Samson in the midst of battle. Watch Samson. In the midst of battle. He know he has a purpose. And he can't really figure out his way to go. But I like something about it. It's like. He was fighting a thousand Philistines and they was piling up on him. He was like, Lord, help me. And he gained strength. Woo. So whose strength was it? <laughs> it was the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him. <laughs> and he slew thousands with a jawbone of an ass. Heaps upon heaps with a jawbone of an ass. An ass. <laughs> I'm a joker to it. Hmm. All through the Bible, the Spirit of the Lord. A lot of, some people preach that the Spirit of the Lord wasn't in the Old Testament. That's a bold-faced lie. It was there. It was there. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. And he began to prophesy. The Spirit of the Lord had been around. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament. The sons of God came to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord told the other ones, hey, uh, what should I tell my servant, my servant, Abraham, what I'm about to do? And Abraham talked with Jesus face to face. Jesus never talked about homosexuality. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. Behold. I saw Satan fall like lightning, said Jesus. Behold, Jesus is the word. You see how people distort the reality of the truth? They separated the New Testament from the Old by saying Jesus was not in the Old Testament. Well, you don't read scripture. He said he expounded to them everything in scriptures concerning him. Now, if you're smart, 
you realize what scripture he was talking about. The Torah. All the way up to what's the last verse of the Old Testament? Is it Micah? I can't remember. But all the way up from Genesis to before Matthew. <laughs> How about that? It's the scripture that he opened the disciples' eyes to concerning him. Right? But that's what people do. Don't even know the word. I'm just sticking to the words in red. <laughs> hey. In all reality, the whole Bible is written in red. Whether you want to believe it or not. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Savior. Ever since the beginning. Read the Bible. Study it. So nobody can't lie to you. Don't you hate being lied to? But some people love lies. What that old song? Tell me lies. Tell me beautiful lies. I remember I asked somebody one day, you want me to tell the truth or you want me to lie to you? They walked off. I guess they ain't want the truth. But I ain't finna lie to you. I ain't got time for it. Am I saying I never told a lie? I'd be a liar if I said that. Yes, I've told a lie before. Yes. God forgive me. But when it comes to that word, <laughs> I ain't finna lie to you. I try not to lie to folks. You know, I work in a profession, and God understands a lot of that. I work in a profession, and I answer the phone sometimes. And, and I'd be like, hold on. And I scream back to my boss. Hey, tell him I'm busy. Uh, they can't come to the phone right now. They got something going on. Well, in reality, that's not really a lie. It's, but it's deceitful to me, but I still do it. How many times growing up, a bill collector come to your mama house? <laughs> Don't answer that door, boy. Can you answer that door? I ain't here. We all sin to fall short of the glory of God. Let's get this straight. Mm -hmm. But lying on the word of God? Woo! Woo! I feel for you people. I feel for myself if I lie on the word of God. Like he said, the place added in his book will be added to you. And you take away from this word, you will be taken from the Lamb's book of life. Imagine how many people are just being added and subtracted <laughs> in this world that we live in today. Take it from his word, add it to his word, anything to gain the people. Anything to please the people. We're not supposed to be people pleasers. You're supposed to be God pleasers. Even when he tell you to be obedient to your master, do this for God's sake. You understand? But the thing is, after a while, it's going to become natural. It's not just like you're not going to get upset when your boss yells at you or do something evil. You're going to get upset. You're going to be upset. When he said, your laborers cry out to me. Because of what you're doing to them. All we got to do is cry to the Lord. Now, sometimes you're going to get upset and say something. It's human nature. You try not to. But sometimes you're going to say something. But sometimes it's the spirit. God don't care if they're a king or a president. He said respect them. You know, when, uh, when Peter uh, rebuked the high priest, he's like, you know it's the high priest. Oh, I ain't know. <laughs> Before you know it, all, oh, my bad, but I just said what I said. I can't take it back. And he most likely meant what he said, but then he reverenced them. Like, yeah, you're right, you're right. You are the high priest. But I serve a high priest <laughs> that go over your head, go over my boss head, go over my head. If you want me to say something, I'm gonna say it. Now, let's go back to Ezekiel when he tells people about warning other folks. 
and by telling other folks the truth, telling people what God says to do. So for, 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 for y'all can get this through y'all head, that you get a, a free pass for shutting your mouth. Let me tell you something. You don't get a free pass for shutting your mouth. You never will. <laughs> now, if there's a time to speak and a time to shut up, that's true. But according to Ezekiel, he said, if I tell you to warn somebody, if I tell you to tell somebody the truth, what I tell you to tell them, well, he told me to tell people. And he told you to tell people too. He said, I will hold you accountable. You see, there's something called accountability in the Bible. And a lot of people, it's not that you are getting punished for their sin. You're getting punished for not telling them what God tells you to tell them in regards to their sin. That's why you're being punished. Because you're trying to withhold the truth from them. I don't want to upset them. And I'm guilty as charged sometimes. And you are too. But as you grow in Christ, you get more bolder in Christ. You ain't worried about what people say. But don't get too bold. And you will be humble. Now let's read what he said in um, Revelation one more time. I'm finna stop. I'm picking my brother up for work. So I got a few seconds before he come downstairs. Let's read from Revelation one more time. I mean, not Revelation, but Proverbs one more time while I'm waiting. 35, just remember this as you go through your day. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield of them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. The best way to reprove somebody is by using the word. In reality, it's the only way. You know, I was talking to a guy about unclean meats. Let me just go back there a little bit. And I used the word. And I'm like, it says it. It says it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then people are start saying, this is why pork is bad. Get on somewhere. Let me tell you something. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a perfect tree made by God. A good tree. It's just a tree he said don't eat from. Because a lot of times God wants you to be obedient. See how much obedient you, you can be today. Think fasting. God said you can eat, drink, and be merry, right? But just think fasting. If God said, I want you to not eat today, but you can eat, right? But just for today, I want you to refrain from eating from today. Does it, does it make sense to you? You can eat though. You can drink. But today, I don't want you to do none of it. I made food for you to eat, but today I don't want you to eat. Take in the wilderness. When God said, all these things I want you to do right here. But when you get into the land of promise, don't observe the things I tell you to do this day. All right, it's kind of clear as day if you want to see it. And he told you that before he gave you a lot of rules and regulations. He's like, everything I bid you to do here this day, don't do. Well, let's go over to the New Testament. People are still trying to hold true to the law. You know, I, I was that phase, folks. I went to a phase when I wouldn't even trim my beard because I read it in the Old Testament. I'm like, I ain't finna trim my beard. Uh, sometimes I start looking rough around the edges and the voice in my head say, hey, man, trim that junk. Trim that beard up, boy. <laughs> Not as if it doesn't matter, but sometimes I go like, hey, trim your beard. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? We put ourselves to a bunch of rules and regulations for a reason. I don't know why God put all those rules and regulations for the children of Israel in, a, in 40 years in the wilderness. But I know he put 10 commandments in there that still hold true to, to this day. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we have all been guilty of all of them. He said, if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all. So we got to start looking at people just because they are homosexual, just because they are liars, just because they are thieves. They still deserve to have a chance with the Most High God because God gave us a chance. But people think just because you are a sinner, 
I am a sinner, I have no right to spread the gospel. Well, Paul admitted that he was a sinner. All of them admitted they were sinners, but they still spread the gospel of God. Now, how you spread it? Like some people spread the gospel to try to hide their sin or try to cover their sin. Nah, the gospel's do what it do. Sometimes I'll be spreading this word to y'all and be hitting myself in the heart. Pow! Oh, Lord, they got me. They got me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Spread it with truth. Do not take away from God's word. Don't add to it. But you understand, people. Be careful. If you want to know if somebody lying to you, go to the scripture. Google. What does the scripture say about <laughs> Yeah, it says it right there. You see, you, 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 you try to live in it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Well, I believe. Well, I think. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you believe. And for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And all I got to do is tell you what he says. It's up to you to listen or you not to. I ain't trying to deceitfully use the word of God. I'm trying to rightfully use the word of God. Rightly divide the word of truth. So if there's a right way to divide the word of truth, there's a wrong way. What's the old song? There's a right and wrong way to love somebody. A right way to love somebody. Hey, y'all, I knew you heard that before. There is a right way. And there is a wrong way, our way, <laughs> what we think is right, how we think love is all about. You love your kids, right? If you got kids, you love them. If they do something wrong, let's say they get caught stealing. How do you show you love them if, you, if they get caught stealing? It's okay, son. God got you. That's what you say. Or you can be like, hey, hey, uh, Dawson, not steal. And you know, would you want somebody stealing from you? Because that's what will happen if you steal. And then some people will kill you if you steal from them. You try to put that little fear in their heart so you don't steal. What's that guy that got choked by the police? can't remember his name. But he went into the store with some fake bills. And the dude called the law on him. Was he wrong for calling the law? He trying to make run a business. Now, the way the police handled it was wrong. But two wrongs don't make a right, right? The way they handled it was wrong. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that you went in there with two fake bills or some fake bills to try to pay for something and then the person caught it and they called the police you set yourself up for that i'm sorry that it happened but you brought it on yourself same way with us we bring things on ourselves we'll we'll encourage ourselves in a decency see for matter people do it all the time the bible says thou shalt not commit adultery and somebody lust over somebody else's wife david get her to me Sims reduced when you were drawn away by your own lust. All right. And you can blame your parents. It's a generation of curse. No, you were drawn away by your own lust. It's simple. And then the Bible gives us, as parents, things not to do. Train a child in a way she needs to go. Right? According to the word of God. So we had accountable for not training them correctly. But when they start walking and talking to themselves is going on with them. They're going to have to come to the knowledge of the truth themselves. You understand? You guys remember, we're all being punished for our own actions. Man, woman, and child, we get punished for our own actions. We don't get punished for the actions of our relatives. We get punished by what we do or don't do, what we say and don't say. That's how it works, Right? That's all I got for you right now, people. 
if you don't, if you haven't given your life over to God, I advise you to do it now. It's set on the right path. You can do it right now. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe he died for your sins. And start the process. And surrender. And that's going to start a long, that's going to be a long process. Like I tell people all the time, give your life to Christ. You're going to have some peace. You're going to have some joy. His peace and his joy. But you're going to have, in this world, you're going to have some suffering. You're going to have some pain. A lot of people don't want to accept Christ fully because they know that what comes with it, they are, a lot of people don't want the pain and suffering. If the Bible says the righteous will suffer, that's part of it. But you're going to get a peace, his peace. And you're going to get joy, his joy. But it's not going to be the way you think. Have a blessed day.